My name is Lynn Fitzpatrick. I'm a teaching assistant professor at the Faye Jones School of Architecture and Design at the University of Arkansas. We're here today to talk to anybody who might be interested in becoming a designer, no matter what age you are. Have you ever thought of building your own fort or your own little secret hideaway? That's what we're here to do today. We're gonna to show you whether you live in the countryside like this or in a neighborhood, how you can design a place to hide out for your deck, for the inside of your house, for your backyard, or even out in the woods. We're gonna make two forts today, one out of cardboard and the other out of fabric. And I have some helpers here with me uh, that are gonna help me build these. Hi, I'm Grace, this is Allie, and this is Grant. Right now, we're going to show you how to make a cardboard fort. Grant, can you tell them what we'll need? Okay, uh, for this project, you're gonna need cardboard, you're gonna need scissors, and you'll probably need some kind of tape. Uh, just be careful when you're using your scissors, make sure you have a parent with you. So the fort we're gonna build has four walls and a roof. Uh, both walls on each side are the same size, and then hopefully the side with the door is gonna be a little bit taller. So we want the back of our fort to be the same uh, width as the front side. So we're gonna use the front side right here to measure onto the back where we're gonna cut. Uh, for this part, I'm gonna use a pencil or a pen to mark kind of where I'm gonna cut out. And I'm gonna take it to the bottom and mark the same, same place down here. So I'm actually using the side piece of another piece of cardboard we have to help draw a straight line so I know where I'm gonna cut later on. So I'm just tracing right along the edge onto the other piece of cardboard. And now we know where to cut. So we're gonna save all of our extra pieces in case we wanna use them later on. So don't throw away any of your extra pieces because you could, you could use them. So now that we have our back cut, I'll hand that to Grace, we're gonna grab our two side walls over here and hopefully we can start putting stuff together. So we're gonna start by putting our first wall on. Grace is taping along the, the outside, up and down. So these corners are kind of the most important part of the building, so make sure that you've got it taped really well. So on this side, you're just going to do the same thing. What I've been doing is taping horizontally on the corner just to get those pieces to stick together, and then taking another piece of tape, and starting to do them vertically to keep the edges sealed. So this is really just for support, and this one is more to keep it actually together. And you want to make sure when you're taping that you push down the tape and make sure that it's fully connected to the, to the cardboard so it's really strong. Okay, so an extra tip to help you guys when you're making this, um, to make your corners a little bit stronger, because you see we taped it, but it's still kind of wobbly right now. We have these squares that we're going to put into the corner right here and it actually makes it a lot stronger. This side's much stronger now that I have the, this little uh, square into the corner. I'm gonna put the tape right here onto the support piece and then the other piece onto the actual wall. And I'm gonna take another piece of tape and I'm gonna put it on the other side so that now this wall and this wall are connected by a solid piece as opposed to just the tape in the corner. So it's gonna be much stronger. Okay, so right now, Allie is going to be making us a door. Um, so we are starting a little bit higher, so all these folded pieces will continue to keep the base supported. And what shape are you going to do? She's going to do a circle door. So, but you can do whatever kind of door you want. It doesn't have to be a circle, just whatever you are feeling. So now Allie has drawn our door here, and we're gonna follow along her line and cut out. Uh, to make our shape, but what we're going to do is we're going to leave one of these sides connected. We're not going to cut it so that the door can actually open and close uh, once we're done. Okay, so what we've done is cut out Allie's trace, and now when you open it, that is your door. And we didn't cut this part right here, so it will stay together. Okay, so now that we have our door cut out, we're going to go ahead and add our final wall. Uh, we're going to use tape the same way we've done for all the other walls. 
And you can see Grant's doing the horizontal tape first again, just to make sure that the corners are touching. And then he'll go back through with the vertical taping to keep them pressed together fully. Awesome, so we've got our door now. Uh, you can see our little front door here. Um, so then last step is the roof. So what we've done is we put our piece of cardboard on the roof now. Um, and it's kind of a weird piece, you know, it's, it's really bendy. There's a lot of shapes that could be made. You could make your, you make your roof kind of like this where it's pointy in the middle, or maybe you want it to be more straight across like this. But I think the, what looks best for ours is this kind of little diagonal zigzag shape just because of our cardboard. So whatever you have at home, there's lots of opportunities, but just kind of go with it. See, see what works best for you. As you can see, it is a crawl-in sort of space, and when you are thinking about making your own fort, that's a factor that you need to consider. Is it one that you want to walk into? Is it one that you're going to crawl into? Is it just one you're going to sit in, or is this more of a friend-family kind of thing? So for us, we, ours is a one-person crawl-in. What do you want yours to be? So now we've got a roof on. Um, it's really, it could be done. This could be our final product, but I think it looks kind of scary right now. There's no windows. It looks just kind of like a block. So we're gonna cut some windows in, um, and you guys can do that too. Whatever kind of shape of windows you want, we'll just kind of get started and see what works the best. Okay, so we cut some windows. Uh, we added a chimney. Uh, we added a little bit to our door over there, but there's a lot more that you can do to make your house your own. You can put a doorknob, you can put some uh, tree limbs, maybe for some columns, um, lots of ways you could paint it, maybe put some stickers on there, all kinds of things, but just make sure you make it your own. Okay, so today we found string, clothespins, fabric, a part of a fence, and some chairs. But just remember, for this one, it's whatever you can find at your house. There is no set of rules, and you can do whatever makes the best for it for you. So we decided to pick this tree today. Um, you guys can find a, a tree or a spot in your yard that uh, you think would work best. But we picked this one because we got a lot of space here around the bottom um, and a lot of good shade. So we found this piece of a fence uh, sitting around. We thought it would be a good idea to kind of use it as part of the wall for uh, this building. So we're going to put in kind of a half circle here around the tree, and that's going to be the, the base for our walls. And then next we decided to take our twine, and we're going to put it around the top here, and we're going to use it to hang some fabric, and we're going to make kind of a, a teepee kind of, or a, a tent kind of shape around. So before we get started putting uh, on our roof, we're going to lay down some fabric to be uh, our floor. So we have something to sit on besides these hard rocks down here. So for our roof, we have a bunch of this old fabric that we found uh, left over. And we're going to lay it over the side. And then Grace is going to take a clothespin and connect it up to our rope that we tied onto the tree. So the reason we're doing this is so you don't actually have to make a roof with this kind of structure. You're utilizing the tree, you're utilizing the rope, and you're making more of a canopy than a flat roof like we saw in the other one. Yeah, and I think this is a good reminder that a roof can be a lot of different things. It doesn't have to be a solid surface. You know, these are, these are soft fabrics, but they're still going to be a roof. And what you can do is overlay them a little bit so you can minimize the gaps in fabric. So what we're doing is making sure that they cover as much area as possible while not pulling them too tight to where they're just not canopy-like. So as you can see, it's pretty windy today and a lot of our fabric's kind of blowing around. So we're going to take our uh, pins and connect our fabric to the wall that we put down earlier so that it's not blowing around as much. And I'm going to go around and do that for each piece. Now that we have everything secured, what Grant and I are choosing to do is to cover up our clothespins that are holding it to the tree. 
So what we're going to do is take this fabric, wrap it around, and then we're going to tie it here in the back so that we won't see as many of those clothespins. Okay, and now since we have most of our building done, we're going to add some chairs so we can kind of sit inside. And to finish off, we have some flowers to make it look nice. Okay, we're done now. Um, and we have Allie who's gonna come test it out for us. Um, and like I said at the beginning, uh, these are just random materials we found sitting at home. You can use whatever you have. Um, and we chose to build it around this tree, but you could build it between two trees. You could build it under your deck, maybe on the side of a wall, whatever you think. Lots of opportunities for you to build stuff at home. So we've just tied some paracord around these three trees and cut down some old broken branches from some of the trees around the edge of the property here. And we're gonna use these to make kind of a hidden shelter in the woods. So let's see what it does. So now we could come in here and hide out in uh, our little um, forest hideaway. So here's another idea that um, you could use at your own place. Do you have a hammock or any kind of uh, set of trees that you could set up a blanket or a cot below? This would be a great place to set up a nighttime camp. What we're doing here is we have a hammock. We're just using some PVC pipe. If you had an old bamboo stick or anything like that, you could get it to span between trees above the hammock. And then one of the things we were thinking is why not string some little twinkly lights? You've probably seen these battery operated twinkly lights. You could just set them up in the tree, wind them around your uh, posts that you're using, and behold, you will have some nice night light, uh, your, own very, your very own set of stars. That looks great, you guys. Okay, so, now with this, oh, look at that. And they come on. Now that we've got some lights on, we thought it'd be fun to open up the hammock and actually have almost like a mosquito netting, like you're off on a safari somewhere. So let's go ahead. We're gonna hang some hangers off this pole to help spread the fabric. Oh, I see Allie was in the hammock. Okay, now let's grab this fabric. I don't know how many pieces we're gonna need and I guess that's kind of up to you. It depends on how far apart your trees are and do you have some blankets or some sheets that you could use? Remember, ask your parents first though. And there we go. Thanks for joining us everyone. Hope you had a great time. We hope you get out there and enjoy building your own fort in your neighborhood or your own backyard.